Hello guys and welcome to geek for geeks In this video, we are going to talk about multi-return value and formatting tools in Go programming language. I hope you're excited, so let's get started. It is possible to return multiple values from a single function. This is usually used to communicate errors. You set this up by declaring multiple return values within parentheses following the parentheses that accepts the parameter for the function. So here we specify that this square root function is going to return one value that's a float64 type and then a second value that's an error type. Now as you might be aware it's not possible to take a square root of a negative number. So we have set our square root function to check for this. It looks at a parameter that got passed in x and if it's less than 0 then we return a value 0 which we are going to ignore as well as a new error value which we get by calling the format package error function and passing it a string can't take square root of a negative number. If x is greater than 0 or equal to 0 then we will proceed as normal. We call the math package square root function and pass it the parameter that we got. We then return the value nil which represents that we have no error. We then handle those multiple return values up here in the main function. We call square root up here and then we assign two variables at once based on its return value. The square root of a variable will hopefully contain the square root of whatever argument we pass in the square root and the error value will hopefully be nil. But in the event that there was a problem, say if we were to call the square root with a negative number, the error value will not be nil. We will have passed the return value of this errorf function which will be an error value which will then log out to the console. Calling the fatal function from the log packages causes your program to print an error message and then exit immediately. So this line down here would never be reached if there was an error. So we handle the error here and in the event that there is not an error, we proceed to print out the square root. So let's try running this. Okay, and because we have called the square root with a negative number, we see our error message printed out here. Can't take square root of a negative number. Whereas, if we were to change this to a valid value, say, get the square root of 9. If we try running this again, it runs successfully and prints out the square root, that is 3. These function calls also return multiple values. But in this case, we are getting a compile error because we aren't doing anything with the second value. We are getting the multiple value os.stat in a single value context. We can get this code to compile by adding the blank identifier. This will assign the second value, the error value from the os.stat to a throwaway variable, this underscore that you see here. So if we have this down here as well as our program will then compile and run. So as you can see up here that we get a file size of the extent text file. However, down here we get a runtime panic. This is a special type of error that occurs after a program compiles and while it's running. And that's something that you want to avoid whenever possible. And this is why assigning error values to a blank identifier isn't always a good idea. In this case, checking the size of the existent .txt file worked because the file was on the disk, but non-exist.txt file wasn't. And therefore, we got an error which we ignored and when we tried to print out the size of the invalid file info object or program panic. We can fix this by checking to see if the error return value from os.stat is anything other than nil and if it is handling the error. So instead of blank identifier here, let's assign this error return value to a variable called error. And here, let's do a test. Let's say if the error is not equal to nil, then we will print out error. 
and if the error is nil it means that we got our file info back successfully so we can move this format print line file info size line up into the else clause and we will be able to print this file info out successfully we will do the same here following getting os.stat from the second file we need to be sure to assign not to the blank identifier but to the error variable we will test if it's null if it's not null we will print out error otherwise we will print out the file info now let's try running this and you see for the first file we get a file size of 0 which is because it does exist but the size is 0 and for the second file it prints out error it tried to run stat on non existent .txt but there was no such file there is one last thing we should cover before we end this video and that is go format tools here we have a file whose formatting isn't idle things aren't indented correctly there's odd spacing in the function call and things like that let's try running the go format tool on this file so i'm going down here in the console i'll type go i'll run the format sub command which is just fmt for short and i'll specify the name of the file that i want to update so that's temp.go run that and it will print out the name of the file that it updated then if i switch back to my editor it will reload and as you can see even though the code looks pretty much the same it has been reformatted our import statements have been cleaned up the indentation on everything has been fixed the comments are aligned with each other and even the spacing inside the each line have been fixed this is done for us automatically by go format tools it analyzed the structure of our source code and indented everything appropriately for us and it make other fixes as well most people don't like all the formatting changes that go format makes but the point is that you don't have to argue about those changes go format is the standard for formatting go code the standard format is easier to read once you have used to it and you don't have to manually make changes anymore to match some arbitrary style guide you should run go format on all your go code especially if you're sharing it and it's so easy to do sublime text and all other major editors can be set up to automatically run go format on files each time you save them so get in the habit go format can save you a lot of time and lot of trouble thanks guys this is the end of the video if you like this video drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to geek for geeks see you in the next video happy coding until then